as a lionfish invasion, um, but it didn't come from the Western Atlantic. It came through the Suez Canal through a process they call reception migration over there. And uh, reception was the guy who I think engineered the Suez Canal, but he did a sea level canal. So it allows fish to go back and forth and other species to go back and forth through the Suez Canal, unlike the Panama Canal. So fish do go across and invasion, invaders in the Mediterranean are sourced from the Red Sea often. Um, so there are quite a few uh, invaders there. And lionfish is one of the more recent ones that's now taking off. So uh, Eileen Oldman, oh, and I can't remember how we originally made contact with Eileen, but we can talk about that later. But, um, she just contacted us directly. Yeah, she contacted and us and she wanted to learn from the things that we did in the Western Atlantic. And we put it together a conference and it really worked out well. And we wrote a paper that just came out. And you can see the nature of the um, invasion of the Mediterranean is mostly Eastern Mediterranean, maybe halfway across. Um, but it started over here through the Suez Canal. So it's migrating westward and expansion is still occurring over there. But it's a different source, same species, oddly enough. Um, and now they're trying to deal with it. So part of our paper was to come up with the ideas uh, that worked over here and didn't work over here so we could present it to the governments of the around the Mediterranean who are not very elaborate, just a surprise, surprise. Um, but they all, they all have their own unique ways of dealing with environmental issues with regard to spearfishing, et cetera. And um, so we were trying to tell them, you need to do this, this, and this if you want to successfully control the invasion. So we put together a little simple graphic in the course of this paper that's written here. Um, that and you don't expect you to read this, but basically it says that the yellow things here, at least in, in the slide are yellow, seem to work for us. The red things did not work for us. And things like bounties and um, shark feeding and animal, animal feeding have not worked very well here, trying to train groupers, et cetera, to eat lionfish. Those have not worked. But, but derbies have worked well. Uh, uh, hunting tourism, like ecotourism, uh, paying to go on a trip to help get rid of lionfish. Um, commercial marketing is starting, you know, had, had a mixed success in the U.S. and the, the Caribbean, but it's, it works somewhat, and we think there's still an upside there. Um, using, you know, changing rules so that you can uh, spear lionfish while on scuba. There are a lot of places that don't allow that. Um, they need to relax those restrictions if they really want to get divers in the water doing it. So um, you can see the kinds of you know, things, and we can talk more about this later. Eileen will mention it in her talk as well. And um, she's, oh, I'm going to let her speak for herself. Okay, good morning everybody at SEMA. Um, this is Eileen reporting from the Mediterranean uh, for Lionfish University. And Lionfish Universe is our bigger group that we are all a part of. So thank you for inviting me here today. Uh, right now, we're just finishing our lionfish biological study in Turkey. Um, it was a really in-depth study where we're checking everything, their growth, their diet, their maturity. Um, I have some preliminary results here we're going to show you in a second um, and, and see how those compare. Now, last September, I was lucky enough that uh, the amazing team at Lionfish University invited me to the Florida Keys. Um, to come be part of uh, a new project that Jim is working on. Uh, here you can see a very happy photo of us all scuba diving together. Um, I was so thrilled and happy to meet these bunch of people. Um, they feel like family, they are so kind and helpful and hilarious, um, and we're gonna have very many good times going forward. So I really want to say a huge thank you to Jim, Stacy, Steve, Alex, Holden, Scott, Ali, everybody who is there supporting this project. Um, especially after Corona, it was so nice to meet people in person um, and just get to know people from behind the computer. So thank you so much for including me in that, everybody. So from our preliminary biological data, uh, we only have we have the male spawning period figured out. We're still working on the female, but what is really interesting is that um, despite other research, we have figured out that they are not spawning in the Mediterranean in the coldest months because lionfish normally have like a 16 degree cutoff where they're not going to be uh, reproductive. So you can see here uh, in December, January, and February, they stop their reproduction, but they do seem to continue it for the rest of the year. 
Um, so it's probably not going to damage populations much, the colder water here. Um, but we do notice that, that there is um, a decrease in abundances in winter, which I think will help us over here a little bit. We have also figured out growth parameters for lionfish. Um, so you can see here uh, their L infinity, which is theoretically the maximum length that they can grow, um, is about 47 centimeters. Now, what we're also finding is that we have many huge size records. Um, so this is also happening in the Western Atlantic um, because their prey do not know that they are predators and they are able to eat pretty much whatever they want. Um, so that's something we're going to hopefully start a competition for soon on the Lionfish University website or through Lionfish Patrol. So um, stay tuned for that. That will be exciting. Uh, the largest size I have found so far personally is about 1.2 kilograms. Um, but, but I've heard there's bigger and we're going to find them and um, it's, it's really amazing that they are just so happy in this new habitat. The length of maturity for females we found is 20.8 centimeters, which is very, very small, uh, which will, you know, help them flourish also. Uh, within the past year, we have published two amazing scientific uh, research publications. Uh, one is on lionfish and pufferfish predation in their native and invaded wages. Um, and the other one was published earlier this year, um, and it's titled Lessons from the Western Atlantic Lionfish Invasion to Inform Management in the Mediterranean. Now, this was a really, really needed paper. Um, as you guys in the West have figured out exactly the best ways to control, you've been doing this for a very long time, and this paper was really a wonderful example example of um, an international collaboration where so many of you helped us make this and polish this um, and we have presented it to governments here and we're hoping they will soon follow your lessons and all your experience because they are incredible and we thank you so much. So if you want to check out those papers, uh, they're both in Frontiers, you can Google the titles and check them out there. Um, from the lessons paper, we had this amazing infographic made, which kind of, you know, is a nice illustration of what to do and what not to do, um, as learned by the Western Atlantic invasion. So, um, oh, this is actually a Turkish version. We have, we have translated this into seven languages now, and it is actually going to be shown at the climate conference in Egypt in a couple of months, so um, at the University of Plymouth Pavilion, so that's very exciting. So uh, we advise everyone that um, scuba diving should be allowed, derbies should be allowed, um, competitions are great. Um, Bounties generally did not work in the Western Atlantic and we're advising against that also in the Mediterranean and we're also advising people not to feed sharks and pred other predators with lionfish because that has caused some problems over there so we are learning um, from all your amassed knowledge. So um, I want to thank everyone that participated in the study because it was really um, a great international collaboration. Now, uh, we are running a lionfish derby this weekend. I hope to supply you with some video clips in a couple of days. Um, actually, when this is published, you should, you should see some results of our first derby. Um, and next year, in, in probably June, we're planning a larger event in southern Turkey. Um, and Lionfish University has um, is probably going to come help us. We are very, very, very excited to host them over here, um, show them our problem, and show, show Turkish people how to put on a fantastic event um, that actually gets the community together, gets divers together. Uh, so the event type, uh, with your help, will be totally new for Turkey. It will be much better than the one I put on by myself, and this will be a really good comparison. Um, and we really hope the government participates and learns how fun and how effective um, events like this can be. 
So academically, um, uh, coming up next year, we want to do another big collaborative paper to compare the two invasions, to compare the Western Atlantic and the Mediterranean invasions uh, with the biology and ecology that we have learned so far. So I want to say a huge thank you to everyone at Lionfish University for um, including me in your team and for helping us and for being so uh, passionate and offering your friendship and I look forward to many more opportunities and I hope everyone dives safely and gets those lionfish. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye. Hey. Right, there you go. That's what's going on in Turkey. And Eileen, Eileen, Eileen did send uh, me some video this morning and I downloaded it. So while we're kind of doing a Q&A session, I'll run that video. It doesn't, it has noise in it not really good to get the sound um, because it's just water and stuff like that but and there's no talking so we can just run it quietly while we're doing a Q&A session for a few minutes and Stacey you want to stop me at some point so we can do raffle right yeah just the very end yeah, so 10 minutes or something of questions